It's a beautiful sunny day and I'm tooling around in a 66 Olds 442 three deuce, four speed convertible with factory air conditioning, even though the top's down. Uh, this car is not in the Brothers collection, but it is an awesome car. We're doing some work on it at our V8 Speed and Resto shop, but we thought this would be a nice place to do a viewer mail episode of Muscle Car of the Week. So, uh, let's get right into it. Our first viewer mail inquiry uh, was a common one we got, and it refers to the uh, 1966 Chevelle SS 396 car we recently featured. Uh, beautiful red car, but it only had 10,700 miles on it. And a lot of people asked, hey, how does that car only have 10,700 miles on it? Well, we dug a little deeper and learned more about the history of the car. It's reported that the earliest known owner drove the car only on rare occasions and kept it covered in his garage until selling it in 1980. And at that point, the owner of Midway Chevrolet in St. Paul, Minnesota, bought the car and stored it in the basement of the dealership. It was maintained and looked after and, you know, started and warmed up and driven around every once in a while. But it lived in that climate-controlled underground storage until the mid-2000s without racking up many miles at all. And today, the car looks great thanks to its pampered storage, routine maintenance, and light usage, uh, which goes all the way back to 1966. For the next question, a lot of times people will say, hey, are those cars for sale in the Brothers Collection? And I guess the grand scheme answer is, you know, everything's for sale at some point. But really the collection is cars that the Brothers are bringing together to form a collection. They're not really into buying and selling all the time. Uh, they do buy cars that they seek out specific versions of to add to the collection, but it's not something that you'll see they're buying a bunch of cars just to flip them. And the videos that we do on Muscle Car of the Week are not for sale ads for the car that we're showing. It's purely a feature to share these cars with other people. At some point they'll have a museum open to the public and you'll be able to see these cars for yourself. Our next question is uh, the 1971 Ford Mustang Mach 1 429 that we featured a couple episodes ago. Uh, this is more of a comment than a question, but I thought it was kind of fun to share. Uh, somebody wrote in and said, little did the factory workers know that in a couple of years they'd be making Pintos for a living instead of Boss 429 Mustangs. And, you know, in the early 70s, that is a, a topic that really happened. You know, a lot of these cars went away as increasing insurance premiums, uh, the onslaught of emissions controls, the high prices of gasoline, and all these things came into effect, which, you know, basically crushed the muscle car. And Ford, they, yes, they were making Pintos. They also debuted the Mustang too, eventually. And uh, as we pointed out in other episodes of Muscle Car of the Week, the Mustang II today is not really looked at as one of the pinnacle Mustangs ever built, but it was one of the most popular, with the second highest production and sales of any Mustang being a Mustang II next to the 1966, uh, you know, second year edition of the car. So, yeah, the poor guys went back to work making Pintos after making really cool Mustang muscle cars. Our next question comes in referring to the recent episode we featured a 1965 Pontiac Catalina with a 421 tri-power, four speed and four doors. And in that episode, I mentioned that the car was ordered with deluxe wheel covers, but in reality on the show, you can see it's got eight lug wheels. Eight lug wheels are a full size Pontiac option, a more high performance wheel. It was a larger brake drum. Uh, and it seems like today, eight lug wheels on full-size Pontiacs are kind of like, uh, you know, Z28 and SS stripes on Camaros. There's more now than there ever were. And when I said that the car was ordered with the deluxe wheel covers, we think that's the story. The car was ordered, but it looks like it got changed to the eight lug wheels at some point. Uh, we're still doing a little bit of research to find out maybe when that happened, uh, because if it was ordered with the, with the eight lugs, the build sheet would have noted uh, an upgraded drum brake package uh, 
rather than the deluxe wheel cover. And I also wanted to clear the air a little bit. Of course, I know that those are not deluxe wheel covers on the car now, uh, but that is truly what it came with. So I hope that clears it up a bit. Next, we've got a little bit of an update. Uh, we showed the episode featuring the 1957 Pontiac Bonneville with the fuel-injected engine and the convertible top. A super cool car. And our friends at a blues band called the Jeremiah Johnson Band wrote a song for that episode, and they called it the Bonneville Shuffle. Well, it's pretty cool because they got a lot of positive feedback on that song, and the Bonneville Shuffle has made its way onto the new Jeremiah Johnson record. So we will have information on our website at musclecaroftheweek.com where you can get a copy of this very cool band's great music uh, as featured right here on Muscle Car of the Week. So we thank them for doing that for us, and we're happy that people dig the song and uh, can get their own versions. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this Behind the Wheel episode of Muscle Car of the Week. Uh, we try to answer as many letters as we can, but unfortunately we can't get to all of them. But that shouldn't stop you from voicing your opinion or leaving us comments. We'll see you next time with another awesome car from the Brothers Collection on Muscle Car of the Week. I'm going to go get some lunch.